For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney and we're here at Mobile World Congress Americas in Los Angeles to uh, catch up with uh, Andreas Russler from uh, Rodi and Schwartz. You know, the last time I spoke to you was about a year ago. 5G was in a very different place. You all were really focused on enabling some of the R&D and some of the engineering type applications of test and measurement. So what's changed in the past year? Yeah, Sean, good, good to see you again. Uh, thanks for coming by. Um, good question, actually. I, I think we're in that stage right now where we're transitioning over from an R&D, pure R&D phase, to already looking into manufacturing and certification um, when we talk about device testing, we're also looking into the deployment phase, right? So, as you know, as an editor, there was a recent announcement by the carriers that they start launching 5TNR here in the US in millimeter wave. Verizon just made an announcement. at and announced additional cities they will do that. Um, so that's what we've been focused on in the recent year, right? Transitioning over from the pure R&D phase into what can we do in terms of helping our customers to uh, then manufacture these devices, and uh, this is a, there's a few demos around here at our booth that we are uh, addressing this, this needs with. And now, what are we looking at here with the CMW100, Andreas? Yeah, so the CMW100 is Roland Schwartz uh, non-signaling uh, test platform for production manufacturing uh, of smartphones supporting, for instance, sub-6 gigahertz 5G and R. Of course, it can be also used for LTE, CDMA, wideband CDMA, 3G, so it's backward compatible. What we integrated over the past year is a new TRX module that allows up to 160 megahertz of bandwidth. So it's not necessarily only for cellular applications, including 5G, it's also for AW802, 11AC, for example, and so forth. And uh, the lack of devices, they have known to be announcement of smartphones. We just can demonstrate today that the readiness of the hardware. Um, so we're basically uh, generating an uplink uh, 5G in our waveform right now, 100 megahertz of bandwidth. This is the maximum bandwidth that we have at uh, sub-6 gigahertz frequencies. And we're showcasing here on the display, as you can see, our parametric testing, where we demodulate that signal, signal quality measurements, EVM, ACLR, and power, of course. So once we kind of move into early 2019 and the device makers ramp up production of 5G and R compliant chipsets, they'll have some of these in their facility. Right? Yes, absolutely. So they have a basically, typically a, a, a software that driving the chipset into the device, setting it in a certain state. Um, so, and then our test set would basically interact with that and uh, take these measurements and that is basically calibration data that you write into the EEPROM of the device so it's acting according to specification, absolutely. And so you mentioned some of these 5G network launches that we're seeing in the U.S. that are focused around uh, millimeter wave frequencies like uh, 28 gigahertz. So as these go live, ahead of time, what is Rody doing in terms of engaging with these carriers to make sure that these networks work the way that they're being sold? Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, so what we have been um, developing as well is a, a, a coverage measurement solution, basically giving uh, the network equipment vendors that are working with the carriers, that are deploying the networks on behalf of the, of the carriers, a tool that they can actually validate and verify coverage, right? Um, as you know, millimeter wave signals don't travel that far, acting uh, uh, interestingly with, with uh, uh, building materials, with uh, uh, shaded glasses, windows, and all that stuff. So you you really need to assess um, if you deploy these remote radio heads at millimeter wave frequency, 28, 39 gigahertz, if you really can achieve this coverage. And that's what our what we call the 5G backpack is for, which is basically using our scanner solutions um, that are existing, that are already being in the field for LTE, now to measure uh, 5G. Now one can argue that, hey, they don't have the bandwidth, that's true. But for these initial synchronization uh, signals that we are looking for to assess the initial coverage, you don't need that bandwidth, right? So you can use the existing hardware, which is valuable to our customers because it saves the investment that they did in 4G LTE. Um, and we well de or are developing uh, software options to actually uh, uh, use that, use the hardware, and giving them early access to these tools to validate that they're not just waiting for smartphones so they can access. So uh, coverage. As that validation has been going on, any interesting results that you can share without going into too much detail? Surprisingly, uh, I was a very uh, doubtful about millimeter wave and its performance. And um, just in a in a trial on one of these pre-5G standards, we could achieve a 
um, a line of sight distance up to almost one mile and still measuring the signal, right? So um, that just shows you that, that um, you know, with all the investments in and, 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 and beamforming technology, hybrid beamforming as it is being used on the infrastructure side, but then also later on on the uh, device side, uh, it's actually making this work. So I think with now real-term deployments, more clusters, uh, users on the network, we will really see how far that can go. But I think uh, we can help with the tools that we have to assess this and uh, make the business cases work for the operators. So as we move from these kind of early days of commercial 5G into something more mature with broader adoption over time, what does that mean for Rodi? Uh, it just means that we need to look into uh, um, cost effectiveness, right? Uh, uh, the dollar per test doesn't need to go up, right? Uh, millimeter wave is a challenge, right? Because to get to these frequencies, you need RF hardware components that can do that. Um, you need to look at uh, uh, certification at RF conformance type of solutions uh, that can be used. And that's our focal point for the next coming months, uh, working with our industry partners to realize that, to validate that, and then, of course, introduce that to the market. All right, very good. Thank you for the update, Andreas. Thanks, Sean. Thank you.